All right, this video is going to be a complete guide to understanding NNN. Even if you've had zero coding or no code experience, if you have used Make or Zapier before, then I'm going to try to connect what you already know about these platforms with NNN. That way you can learn it faster and get right into building some of the cool AI stuff you see online. For this beginner's tutorial, we're actually going to build out an AI email autoresponder just to learn the platform. I know that seems like a lot for your very first tutorial and you know, for your very first build on NNN, but that's really the power of NNN. You can build cool stuff like this, you know, oftentimes there will be a full-time person just sitting there and replying to person's emails, right? Like a executive assistant that you can completely automate with the power of AI and NNN. If you're not in a bubble, you probably already knew that. So let's go a little deeper into why NNN is a big deal and why there's so much value and so much untapped, you know, uncharted territory specifically in this area. So why should you learn how to use NNN? The reality is most businesses are doing things manually, right? And I know it might not seem like it because you might be in this bubble of watching Zapier make or NNN tutorials and AI tutorials, but most businesses have a human that's doing most of the work. And this is a problem because it's very prone to human error and it costs thousands of dollars wasted, right? Think about it, right? Having a full-time person doing something like responding to emails versus an AI, AI might cost, you know, I don't know, like maybe a dollar max per day. Um, that's like really, really pushing it versus a human. You have to pay them, you know, I don't know, $10, $20 per hour. That causes a lot of wastage. And like, again, humans are not perfect with the right prompts and right guardrails. You can get AI to be almost perfect and you can remove this, you know, component of human error. And more importantly, remove that thousands of dollars wasted so that businesses are more profitable. By a similar token, most businesses are still mainly copy pasting things between platforms and spreadsheets. And you know, they have a dedicated person just to do this role. They'll have a dedicated person just to review to see what that person did and make sure it's all accurate and they didn't miss anything, right? And so it's this weird thing where they hate their job. Everyone in the business hates this whole manual process. They wish there was a better way. That is what NNN is gonna allow you to do. And you might be wondering, well, why don't they just watch this video and do it themselves? And you know, I'm sure some of you guys might be business owners trying to solve this within your own business, but I also understand some of you guys might also just want to start a business and um, learn at an end and start selling this to other people. And the last thing I want to point out is that most businesses cannot afford to hire custom code development teams. There's this weird rift that I feel like no one talks about where the enterprises of the world, they can hire, they can even build their own development team and you know, get all this stuff done for them. But the small and you know, oftentimes even medium sized businesses, they can't afford custom code development teams, right? They just don't have the money. So they're stuck in doing the old school way of things, wishing that you know, there's a better way of doing it. So this way of using no code and specifically NNN will allow you to do what these custom code development teams do, but do it for cheaper and for less time. And why NNN over other no code automation tools? I have a comparison slide over here that compares NNN to Make and Zapier. But at least in my opinion, the reason why NNN has blew up, I was in the past, you know, a couple months, past year or so, is because of the rise of AI, right? The rise of AI requires tools to be more flexible. And the truth is Make and Zapier were just not cutting it, right? It was just too limited in terms of what you could do to a point where uh, you might even be better off using custom code for AI, but not everyone knows how to use custom code. So, so NNN kind of just, you know, made its own place of being this new thing that's between make and custom code to do all the stuff you can do with custom code, but do it in a no code way so that you don't need to learn JavaScript or Python, right? That's the first reason. And I think the second reason, this one's, I think, just as big, if not bigger, is that you can actually self host NNN. What that means is if you're familiar with the way no code, you know, platforms are priced, it's based on like every operation, every scenario, make the base plan. I think is like 10,000 scenarios after 10,000 runs, you have to pay more. And the problem with that is that with AI kind of growing, AI is not as linear, right? Like oftentimes, you know, you'll get some data from somewhere, you'll call open AI, you'll get some data from somewhere, call Claude, get that data, mash it up together with AI again, and then go somewhere else, get more data. Like it, there's just so many operations, so many different combinations that'll run. Like you can easily go over 100, 200 different operations for one workflow. And it's a problem because if you want to run this at scale in a production environment, you don't want to be paying make like, I don't know, $500, $600 every single month to do it. So when you can self host it, it's going to be a fixed fee just to run it. So it could be $10, $20 per month, regardless of how many operations you actually run. So it's independent of that, right? And you can kind of adjust up and down based on your workload. And then the final slide, how does NNN compare to other automation tools? I'm not going to make it super cut and dry for you guys and say that Zapier is bad and, you know, NNN is good and this is why you should use it. I think there's, you know, places where you use each one. So let me kind of break this down for you. Flexibility wise, there's no doubt Zapier is not flexible at all. Make and NNN are very flexible. Make still has some limits in terms of what you can do. NNN is almost like it's probably the best solution I've seen to doing custom code without, you know, using actual custom code. So the NNN definitely wins here. 
The problem with, you know, having flexibility, which, you know, Zapier, I'm sure knew, is that it makes it, you know, less user friendly. So NNN is probably the most unuser friendly and Zapier is the most user friendly. And I think they're going to stick here because Zapier oftentimes, you know, when you think of no code, you think of Zapier. So um, it's very easy to learn Zapier. I'm not going to say it's hard to learn NNN, but I think the learning curve is definitely a lot steeper. If you know how to use Make, then learning NNN is pretty trivial. If you know how to use Zapier, then um, there's going to be a couple of key concepts you need to understand from Zapier. And once you understand how they work in NNN, then you'll be good. In terms of powerfulness, I wouldn't consider Zapier to be not powerful at all. Um, one of the biggest, I guess, wins or you know advantages Zapier has is that it has custom integrations with many platforms that Make and NNN don't. And I mean, you know, they'll have special partnerships. I don't know who's paying who for this, but... Um, and there, there's been many scenarios in which I'm trying to find an integration. I don't find it in Make, but I find it in Zapier. So you can obviously use that to your advantage and kind of link up, you know, a start. You can start a workflow with Zapier and then connect Make and NNN. But my point is, is that I wouldn't say that Zapier is not powerful. It's just not as powerful as Make or NNN. Yeah, I mean, in terms of comparing Make and NNN, I think they're very similar. NNN just opens a lot more stuff under the hood, which makes it more powerful. So without further ado, let's get right into building. So this is the homepage of NNN. As you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff going on with our credentials, executions, and admin panel, right? Um, like I said before, there's a lot of stuff you can do with NNN. For this video, let's just focus on the basics. Let's get your first workflow done. After we go through all those steps, we can always come back and it'll make so much more sense versus me trying to explain it to you the first time without giving you the context of how it fits into a workflow. So I'm gonna go on create workflow here, click on this. This is our editor over here, right? Similar to any kind of no-code tool. I click on this and I add different steps. If I click on first step here, there's multiple ways we can create a trigger, right? If you're not familiar, a trigger is something that starts an actual workflow. So in this case here, how do I know when to respond to an email? It's gonna be when an email actually comes in. So that's gonna be my trigger, right? Like another example is with spreadsheets. If you wanna do something every time a new row is added, there's like a new row trigger. Um, if you want to have like a manual trigger, when you go on a different website, there's a webhook trigger, right? So there's, there's many different ways of doing it, right? Triggering it manually, you click on a button and it actually does the actual test. Then there's on app events, right? These are integrations with the platforms we all love, Airtable, Asana, AWS, right? Charge based Calendly, all that stuff. There's on webhook call. If you visit a URL, like I said before, there's on a schedule. So every single day, every single hour, every single minute, check something on form submission. And I will say most of the time you're going to go between on app event and webhook call. So for today, we're going to go to on app event. We're going to type in Gmail here, click on Gmail on message received. So right off the bat, you're going to notice a big pane has popped up and it seems like there's a lot going on, but it's actually very simple. In the middle here is going to be your setting for your trigger or whatever event you're actually setting up. Um, in our case, it'll be a Gmail account. I already have mine set up. If you don't, just create a new credential, use OAuth 2 and sign into your Gmail account or whatever account you have and that should be connected up together. Next is poll time. So this is a little more advanced stuff, but basically this is not an instant webhook. What that means is it's not like every single time an email comes in, this workflow will run. It'll actually check every minute and at the end of the minute, it's gonna see if a new email has came in and then you know do the workflow. So message event is gonna be message receive and we can just keep it in the simplify mode, right? Um, for now, we're gonna skip the advanced stuff. And when I click on test event here, you're gonna notice the output is gonna be, well, in this case, it's a table, right? But fundamentally, it's JSON data. If you're not familiar with JSON, just think of it like a, almost like the language of transferring data back and forth in like this nice organized way with brackets, um, the key value pairs, right? Like this is the ID, this is the actual value of the ID, this is the thread ID, this is the actual value of the thread ID and so on, right? And then the snippet, right? This is the actual message. So the original message, hi, Jeet, it's Chris. My business needs a ton of automation. My operations are all over the place. What would be the next steps for us to work together? Thanks, Chris. That's what this is, right? Hi, Jeet, it's Chris. My business needs a ton of op um, automations. And like this right here is an ASCII character to represent the actual um, apostrophe right here. So that's what that is. Fundamentally, this is just all the data we're getting from Gmail about the email that we just received. So at this point we have the email. Now we need to create an actual AI autoresponder. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to add a new module here and a um, couple options here. We've got an action and an app, which is what we're actually going to use. I'm going to type in open AI, but real quick, you know, walking through some of the other ones, there's data transformation and flow. So, you know, if you want to run some custom JavaScript code, if you want to add in um, a date time, if you want to edit variables, filter it. For example, if you only want like a priority email to be responded to, or maybe you don't want a priority email to be responded to, then that's how this is how you can kind of filter that out and only respond to certain types of emails. So 
merging it. Like there's a ton of stuff you can do here. I'm going to stick to the basics, right? But like I said, N and N, there's a lot of stuff you can do. You don't need to learn all of this right off the bat. I would say just learning the action and app will be more than enough to get you started. For today, I'm just going to use OpenAI. I know there's a ton of LMs out there, um, but everyone's familiar with ChatGPT and you know the different LMs that it offers. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to click on Messenger Model here. And again, you're going to notice the same type of pane has popped up. The left side is the input. So unlike the trigger where, you know, before the trigger, there was no data we could actually use. In this case, this will be our input. So this is the data that we have the previous email right here. Now we actually want to do something with it, right? So that's kind of how all this is coming together. In terms of credentials, you have to make a new API key. So in my case, I've already set it up. But if you go to this website right here and make sure you log in, you, all you have to do is create a new secret key. Um, let's name it as yt testing n8n tutorial um, project you can just do default project this is going to be the way n8n can access your personal open ai account within n8n if you're going to use an api you will be charged a little bit so this is how that connection is actually made and with that in mind make sure don't share this with anyone because if someone has this key they can actually access your account and use it and kind of bill you for their usage so obviously don't share this out i'm going to delete this key after this video so you come in here, click on create a new credential, you put in your API key and click save and the connection should be good, should be no issues there. Um, in terms of resource, we will just do text. You can also do image, audio, uh, put in a file, assistant, right? We're gonna keep it to the basics, right? Ultimately, we're just getting this input here from the email thread of what the person said and we wanna put a response back. That's why we're seeing the text here. Um, operation, message or model, right? We'll keep it simple here. In terms of what model I want to pick, I'm just going to pick 3.5. You can pick any of the new models. And finally, the most important part, the text, right? This is equivalent to the prompt that you're going to send out to OpenAI and get a response back from. Like this is equivalent of going to chatgpt.com and give it, typing something in and expecting a response back. So we want to make sure our prompt is good. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here or make it bigger. I'm going to say you are Lisa, uh, an assistant for apply GPT that responds to emails. Your job is to find a time to coordinate and set up a meeting with people that are interested in working with Jeets. I'm gonna say respond to this email. Pretty basic prompt to say you are basically an AI email autoresponder, right? We're gonna we're not gonna say it's AI because I want this to be like a real human like response, but maybe you might want to make it clear to the person that you're responding to that this is an automated response. It just depends on your use case. What is that actual email? It is the snippet here, right? And you're gonna notice it has the bracket. So this is a dynamic variable. What that means is it's not it's not always gonna be this response here, because we want we want the input to change based on well, the email comes in, right? I don't want to keep responding to this email here. So that's why we have this dynamic variable here. And on the right side, you can see it says, hi, Jeet, it's Chris, right? So this will change for every new email that comes in. That's why it's green. And I think that should be good for the prompt. I don't think I need to do anything else, right? Like it'll, it'll be good to kind of start us off. Role will be user. That's fine. We don't have to go to system for now. And yeah, let's kind of test the step for us. Let's see the response we get back. So... It's the equivalent of me clicking enter on that prompt and getting a response back. The response we get back is, hi, Chris, I'm glad to hear your interest in working with Jeet to improve your business operations. To move forward, we can schedule a time to discuss your needs, right? And so on. So that's pretty good, right? Good enough to kind of get us started here. And I didn't mention this before, but the table, JSON, and schema, they're all fundamentally the same thing. It's just dis displaying this JSON data here in different formats. So um, if you have a lot of different entries, then maybe the table format might make more sense because there's just, it'll be easier to read. Um, I like sticking in JSON, um, schema is kind of like a, um, it's almost like a prettier version of the JSON format here. So, okay. So at this point we've got a response right here. How do we actually re reply to that initial email here so that the response is actually complete, right? Like at this point, yeah, it's cool and all that we have the response, but we want to automatically reply to this email. That's going to be the final step in our workflow. So I'm going to click on plus sign here. I'm going to type in Gmail because we're going to actually use Gmail to reply to the email. And then I'm going to find the reply to a message right here. Just like before on the left side, we have all the inputs, right? All the previous steps and their output that have happened before for us to use in this input. And, you know, in this case, actually reply to the message. 
So the very first thing is gonna be message ID. This is how we identify which message we need to actually reply to. And I believe um, this would just be this ID right here, right? Again, with the curly braces, right? We want this to be a dynamic variable. We don't wanna just hard code this value here because then it'll just keep replying to the same message. Email type, HTML is fine. And the only other thing we need here is gonna be the actual message, right? Like what the AI actually said is gonna be the response to our original email. So I'm gonna take this content here and drop it here. Again, it's gonna be a dynamic variable because we want it to switch. So final thing, let's click on test step here. It's gonna do its thing. It's gonna say email is sent. So if I go back to this original email here and I click on refresh, you're gonna notice I get my response back. Hi Chris, I'm glad to hear that you're interested in working with G to improve your business operations, to move forward, we can schedule a meeting, and it kind of goes on, right? You're gonna notice the new line kind of messed up there. That's probably because we need to do a better prompt. Uh, we might need to, instead of doing slash N, I just realized we might need to actually put in a break line character in there. So do slash BR slash BR. But I hope you're kind of getting an idea of how to actually do this, right? So if I exit out of this, just three steps right here, three modules, and we've got a complete AI email autoresponder. Sure, we might need to mess with the prompt here and make it a little better, make it more exact to what you guys wanna do or whatever it is, whoever you're selling it to, make it more attuned to their business. But this is a high level idea here. At this point, all we have to do is just activate it and click save. And I mean, this will be live. Every time a new email comes in, it'll automatically respond. So that's gonna wrap up this video. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment if you guys have any questions, and subscribe if you want more in-depth NADN tutorials just like this. Thanks for watching, bye.